Good morning. That was weak. Good morning. Good morning. All right, that was a little bit better. I, I had a couple notes. I am Attorney Jai Person Lynn. Uh, do we have a timer anywhere? I do. All right, well, I see it's 10.15. I'm going to go to 10.25. All right. <clears throat> I'm Attorney Jai Person Lynn, proud class of 2000 graduate of Westchester High School. Where the comments at? Uh, here it is. I see you. I see you. Y'all go to Westchester High School. We went to Westchester High School. Y'all go to Westchester and Rich Sciences Magnet. It's cool. It's all the same, you know, same buildings. Okay. Somebody called. Okay, we just going to turn him off right now. Oh, uh, he, hold on. He'll be back. I'm sorry. You know, that's life sometimes. You get a little ringing behind you. I'm um, Jai personally in class 2000, Westchester High School, class of 2004, cum laude graduate of Hampton University. How many people here are going to Hampton University? You are? I want to. Well, what year are you? Uh, 19. Okay. <laughs> Sophomore, right? Yeah. Okay, great, great. So the rest of you, if you want to make a difference where you stand, you've got to make better choices. To start with going to Hampton. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, but no, real, real, really speaking, uh, trying to get serious, you can really make a difference wherever you are. Why? Because your, your blood is flowing today, right? You hear me? You can move our arms. You don't even have to move your arms to be able to make a difference. But if you can, that helps. If you walked here, that helps. That alone, that is enough. If you can hear my voice, if your, your blood is flowing, that is enough. Then you have to look close, look at who you are. Look at who you are. Look at your DNA. You're black. Most of you. Some, all of you, I'm not sure. But you're black. What does that mean? Science has now proven that trauma affects us generationally. So for most of us, we have experienced, our ancestors have experienced, the greatest trauma known to humankind in the history of this world, the American slave trade and American slavery. Nothing else on the world like it. They'll tell you, oh, you had slavery in Africa. It wasn't like this, though. Guaranteed. So we've had the most uh, significant trauma that has been passed down to us. We have to recognize that. That is in our DNA. We have power, poison, pain, joy, all of that in our DNA. Our hustle, our right? ambition, that's in our DNA. We have that, but you have to use it. And how do you use it? You know your worth. You know your worth. You're worth a lot. I'm telling you, I'm a young man. I'm Real talk, conversations y'all probably still have. Man, I'm looking for them low self-esteem girls. <clears throat> Real conversation. You're laughing because you said that. I was wrong when I had that mindset, but I had it. And that's a, a problem. You have to know your worth. For, for me as a man having that mindset, what is, it, what is that saying about my worth? That I'm looking for somebody with low self-esteem. That means I don't value myself great. And then the, the, the woman that succumbed to my advances, she didn't value herself great. That's a problem. We have to know our worth. Um, and, and just understand, wherever you are, like I said, you have to be there. Now, you, you are young, gifted, and black. That is unfortunately a, uh, what do you call that, a, a threat to some people. There are people who really believe the same way they believe illegal immigrants are over here taking our jobs. Does anybody ever pick strawberries? Yeah, nobody here trying to pick strawberries, so they're not taking that job from you. But that's what people actually believe. It's an actual threat. So you have to know that, and you don't have to let, you have to not allow the world to take you out your element. Um, and sometimes, you know, you got to go a little hard in this world. But if you got to go hard on it, you got to make it look sexy, you know? <laughs> yeah, you see that? My guess was my shape. Nobody else. <laughs> All right, and then, you know, in that time, you're going to feel like everybody's against you. You're going to feel like, you know, ain't nobody praying for me. Don't nobody love me. I don't get it. But, hey, feelings come and go. That's why you can't get caught up in your feelings. Anybody uh, like sports? Anybody? You ever had your team lose at the very end of the game, last shot? Yeah, you show your feeling was up. We going to win. Any Atlanta Falcons fans? Y'all should know Feelings come and go like that, <laughs> and <laughs> so you so you have to you have to understand you can't get caught up in those feelings. 
because they do come and go like that. So you don't want to get too high, you don't want to get too low, but you know, you, you do want to have feelings because when you don't have feelings, you become numb to the world and all kind of things happen at that point. Um, and then you have to have some, some gumption, some, some of who you are. Which, which, what are you loyal to? You know, is it, is, is it the, the schoolwork? Is it your friends, money, fame? What, are, are, are you loyal? Uh, what are you loyal to? That's going to determine what you're going to work for, what you're going to get up for, what you're going to fight for. I'm a criminal defense attorney, but I call myself an abolitionist. Anybody know what an abolitionist is? Yeah, they freed the slaves. And if you've ever seen lockup at a uh, criminal courts building downtown, I, first time I walked in, I was like 22 years old, walked in, yeah, I want to see, went in the back, it was like 30 black dudes and two Latinos in like a room like the size of half of just where these tables are. Blew my mind. Let me know I'm an abolitionist. I'm really fighting for freedom out here. Um, <clears throat> and then you have to have that pride. It's a gift and a curse. Pride is a gift and a curse because you're going to be proud of who you are, where you come from. You want to be proud of that. But you don't want to be so proud that you end up making bad decisions. You turn down a good job because somebody talked to you a little crazy and when they offered it to you. Uh, you, you left a good relationship um, because you were too prideful to apologize for your mistake. You don't want that. But you do want to have pride. Um, but with that pride, <coughs> what do you need? You got to be humble. Humility goes hand in hand with pride. Now, humility is in the preparation, not the celebration. I'm going to tell you that again. Humility is in the preparation, not the celebration. What does that mean? You're preparing for SATs, tests, whatever. You study hard, you sacrifice, you don't go to that party. You get the A. Don't, you know, celebrate. Turn up. Do whatever you do. That's how you do it. It's not all. Oh, when your friend didn't, who didn't sacrifice didn't get the grade you got, it's not, oh, come on, cheer up. That's cool. It's cool to be a good sport. But that's not what makes you humble. What makes you humble is the sacrifice that you made on the front end. Um, and understand that, you know, you guys are coming up on a world where everything's right there at your fingertips on the phones, technology, all of that. And those, those natural feelings, those lustful feelings are going to come out. You have to be aware of that. The, the, the lust is more than just like a sexual type thing. It's also lusting after money, after cars, after clothes. These are the things I guarantee you. When, when I graduated from college, and uh, like 12 boys I came up with in Inglewood, it was two of us that didn't have records at the time that I graduated college. And a lot of all my friends' records, I have never had a friend go to jail over violence. It's like burglary, credit card scam, check scam. It's always lusting after the money. And real talk, it is dangerous. It is a drug. It is addictive. One time I pulled up to the club. I was home on break. Boy had a new Tahoe. We pulled up. We got a click. It was called Dairy Products. Why was it called Dairy Products? Anybody know? Yeah, because we was about to cheese. That's why we was called Dairy Products. <laughs> so we pulled up in the Tahoe, and like all the heads turned and looked at us, and we got out the car. They was like, oh, they got Dairy Products. And then, you know, we walked straight to the line. It was addicting. I was like, man, why that school being broken? I could be out here balling. <laughs> But that was that lustful feeling. So we have to be cognizant of that, be aware of that. And then we have to value uh, love and understand what love is. Love, and who thinks love is a feeling? You're wrong. Love is an action. Love is an action. I'm, I'm going to explain that. Love is an action, and it's a reciprocal action. You have to give love to receive love. That's very important because that is the biggest difference you can make in this world. Love is really what we are lacking in our communities. Why would you kill someone that you don't know? You don't love yourself. You don't love them. You don't love humanity. That is what we need more so than anything is love. I cannot stress that enough, and it's not a feeling. It is an action. I'm wrapping up real soon. Um, and understand, you know, you're giving love. You're conquering your lustful feelings. You, you're humble, but you, you're proud as well. But understand, sometimes... You're going to have to get your hands dirty. Talking about dirty, dirty, like, you know, <laughs> X-rated dirty. Like, you got to get that. Like, I'm a criminal defense attorney. I start a murder trial next week. I, my client don't want me to be, you know, uh, peaceful buddy, buddy. I, we got to do some things. We got to win. 
Sometimes you just have to win, and, and, and it takes that. That doesn't mean be a bad person. That doesn't mean give up who you are. But just understand, sometimes you have to stick your hand in the mud. You, 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 can't, you can't plant anything any other way without getting your hands in the mud. So you have to get your hands a little dirty sometimes um, and understand that because of our DNA, because of our experience, we have been taught fear. A lot of times our parents teach us fear as a, as a coping mechanism. So we have to overcome that fear. Why? Because fear makes you dumb. Through all, I got a bunch of clients. Man, why'd you let them search your car? I was scared. It made you dumb. You knew you had a gun in the car. You knew it wasn't registered. You knew you were a felon. You ain't supposed to have it. Now you got a new charge all because you were afraid. Not because the cops were, were wrong. They said, can I search your car? You said yes. Why? Because you were afraid. Fear makes you dumb. Not just in criminal, definitely in the criminal justice system when dealing with police, but in other aspects of your life too. You don't take uh, opportunities. You don't take shots because you're scared. It, it, it makes you dumb. And then understanding that there is a greater power out there, something that you must uh, succumb to. There is that, whether it's God, Allah, Buddha, whatever, there's a greater power out there. I want you to understand that. Um, if you're going to have fear of anything, let it be that and move forward, understand who you are, be who you are, be who you see, meaning when you look in the mirror, I want you to see somebody that's young, that's gifted in black, I want you to be that. So, did y'all get what I done? Y'all follow me? No. Y'all follow me? There it is. Well, that's our introduction. We're going to make a difference where you stand. It's what I do every day of my life. I'm 5'3", but I've been kicked out of courtrooms before. I ain't scared. Why? And you know what happened after you kicked me out? The next judge uh, ruled the way I wanted to. Why? Because I wasn't scared to stand there and take that. We have to fight. And if you're not willing to be a soldier, get off the front lines. All right? Wish you the best, and I hope you take a lot. Of All right, folks, so um, I got, I got, I got, I got.